Hey, it's Greg. That's right, this face again. You might remember it from such feature videos as how to use color and other less popular ones. Anyways, I'm back because I've got a brand new color trick that I really wanna share with you. So today we are going to make a bunch of color palettes using just one color. Quick disclaimer, this is by no means a replacement for actually learning color theory and developing your own meaningful process for how to use it. However, if after watching and hopefully liking this video, you do want to learn more about it, I teach a course about this whole thing. Visit thefuture.com slash color. You can learn more about the course. You can sign up right there. You might like it, I don't know. Okay, disclaimer over. I think we can all agree that color is hard and pairing colors together, that's even harder. So where do you start when you wanna make a color palette? Well, think about the last time you did. What was your process and how did it turn out? Now you could start by, I don't know, Googling color theory and going down the Wikipedia rabbit hole and there's a lot of cool stuff, but it's a lot of reading and not much application that you can use. Another option to consider is using a palette generator or pulling from a library like Adobe Color. But what happens when you wanna customize it or you wanna create something unique? Let me show you what I mean. Start with a color that you think you're probably going to use. Now for this exercise, I'm gonna use this kind of red looking thing here. And I'm gonna name it Rusty because I like to name things. Make sure that it's not too saturated and also that it's not too dark because we need some wiggle room to play with here. So somewhere in this general vicinity should work just fine. If our goal is to make a color palette, then our lone tone is gonna need some friends. Now we could simply add some tints and shades and then call it a boring old day, but that's not why you're here. You're here for something new and exciting. So let's do it the fun way. And here's how that way works. Visualize the Photoshop color picker. Now imagine a line that starts in the top left corner of it, and then it bends all the way down to the bottom right, passing directly through the color you picked. For old Rusty here, that line might look something like this. Basically, the brighter a color gets, the less saturation it has, and the darker a color becomes, the more saturation we add to it. Now here's where things get interesting and crazy and even a little dangerous. So not only are we going to follow an arc, but we're going to be changing the hue as we move along. Let me show you what that looks like. So to flesh out our palette, we're gonna need at least four colors that are lighter and four colors that are darker. Remember the arc, we're gonna follow this arc up into the left and then if we go dark, we're gonna go down and to the right. So I wanna go light, so I'm gonna go up a little bit and then over a little bit. And so we get lighter and we get less saturated. But then we're also gonna move the hue up a little bit too. So if we're in this red here, I'm just gonna nudge it up just a little bit so it's kinda orangey. And we'll throw that bad boy down. And we'll do that three more times to try to get a nice kind of like array of color here going on. And how much you decide to move the hue is up to you, but I like options so I try to move it enough so that I'm getting a pretty different looking hue each time I go up. Okay, one more over here, it's kind of venturing into to green a little bit. Okay, cool, that's our light color. Now let's do the same for our shades over here. We're gonna open this up, we're gonna go down to the right, following this kind of arc trajectory and Instead of moving up again, I'm gonna move the other way on the color bar. So if it's red, I'm gonna wrap it all the way back up around the top. And we're gonna go venture into this like purplish, purplish looking place here. Yeah, that's cool. Now we wanna be careful not to get things too uh, dark or too crazy saturated. And I will explain why later. Here's what we've got, which is not entirely bad. I don't hate it. I mean, we could use this as our color palette but that's kind of an anticlimactic ending, don't you think? So then how do we take this further? Well, one thing we could do is add some more layers of value. So I'm gonna take this top part and select the first like third of this, and then I'm gonna open hue and saturation. Now this top part will be the lighter colors. So I'm gonna bring the lightness up quite a bit, and then I'm also gonna bring the saturation down 
So we kind of get into more like pastel territory and that's cool. Now, the last little trick we're gonna do is we're gonna slightly move the hue again. So in this case, I'm gonna move it a little bit to the left, just a touch, not much, it looks good. Now, let's do the same thing for some darker versions. Select the bottom part, open hue saturation. And in this case, we're gonna do the exact opposite. So we're gonna make our colors darker, right? Something like that. And that's why before I said, hey, make sure you don't get too dark or too saturated because otherwise this would just go pure black and, and that's no fun. These are darker. We're gonna add more saturation. Oh yeah, look at that. And now we're gonna adjust the hue, but we're gonna do it in the other direction. So for the lights, we went to the left. For the darks, we're gonna go to the right. So just a little bit. Oh yeah, getting some some cool funkiness over there. I'm just making sure there's enough of a difference in value between this middle one, the brights and the darks. And I think we're good. There we go, value. Now we're cooking with fire. We've got a beautiful range of color and value to work with. I think, I think we're ready to start building some palettes. At last, we get to the fun part, making some color palettes. There's no real rule for how to do this, but I like to keep in mind, I'm gonna need a kind of brighter color and then a darker color to play off of. So let's make a few palettes and see what happens. I'm gonna start with uh, Trusty Rusty here and then let's, let's go for a complementary color palette. So we'll do red and green and then I think we need a neutral to throw in here. And then maybe like one really dark color, that'll be our, that'll be our kind of darkest color. Cool, that's interesting. All right, uh, let's make a couple more. So maybe instead of rusty, we go with this, this kind of yellow here. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick up this green again because I like how these work together. Maybe a brown and this one, maybe we'll, maybe we'll keep it soft. So we don't need this kind of high contrast dark thing. That's kind of an interesting palette right there too. So here, let's move that sucker out of the way. Um, but maybe we do want to make something high contrast. So I'm gonna, here, I'm gonna go extreme, go over here, pick this deep purple, and then maybe we pair it with this kind of, you know, brighter yellow orange, go Lakers. And then maybe we throw, uh, throw here, like this kind of bright neutral in there. So we got really high contrast. And then maybe we even put in like a, like another kind of, another like, flavor over here. Yeah, I like that, that's cool. This is generally what I do. You know, I'll just kind of explore this and combine different colors and find ones that I really like uh, putting together and they just kind of like feel right, depending on the on the kind of theme of what it is I need the colors for. And here's the, here's the coolest part, right? If you really like a palette, you can, you can take this and expand it even more by just basically doing the same exercise that, that we did before. Then look at that. We have a, a, a wonderful kind of like base palette to work with. And then we have these cool like levels of value to, to add to it. Now I know what you're thinking. Okay, he's for sure going to end the video here. There can't possibly be any more color magic to squeeze out of this exercise. But as it turns out, you thought wrong. I've got one last trick I wanna show you that we can use with this just to get a bit more mileage out of what we've done here. Sometimes when I'm, when I'm feeling saucy, I will go in and I'll make a new solid color layer and I will apply it over my colors here and then pick a really kind of bright and saturated color and then set its blending mode to overlay. Look what happens. That's crazy, wow. Look at all these, it's like a brand new set of colors, right? It's like, look at that and now look at it. It's really, it's a really awesome way to kind of just add another dimension and get more variation out of, out of these kind of color swatches. Let's make a few color palettes and, and I can show you just how much uh, mileage you can get out of, out of this. <laughs> Here, there's our black. 
Look at how cool it is and so much different than the previous one. Cool, right? I think so, but I'm also a huge nerd for color. Now to give you an idea of how flexible this whole process is, here's a montage of all the color palettes I came up with from just this one exercise. Check it out. This trick helps you get excited about using color in fun and new ways, and hopefully making a few color palettes of your own. And remember, I teach a whole course about this, so if you really want to learn more about it, be sure and check that out. I'll put a link to the course in the description just in case. Also, if you have a question about any of this or color in general, drop a comment here, DM me on Instagram, whatever bakes your cake. Thanks for watching, and I will see you around the internet.